are an, a YouTube OG, I have to ask you the question. Um, if you were going to start a YouTube channel today, um, mm -hmm. is it a viable way to make a living? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I think, you know, I think it's as viable now as it was then. Like, it, it's just a stupid idea. <laughs> you know, it's just like getting into the industry. It's the same thing. You know, if a hundred people do it, maybe one of them might be able to be find some, you know, success. Of, uh, success and and you know maybe one out of a hundred thousand might find actual solid success and maybe one out of a million might find longevity in that success you know and that seems very you know much to be the case across all sorts of media of this kind and it, it, it's just and I mean, Film Riot, at first I started as a show called Making the Film, which in an episode we put up one of those original episodes, it was just unbelievably bad. But I did that <laughs> for free because YouTube didn't make money. There was no monetizing at the time. There was no money to be made. So that came from sponsors. But how am I going to get sponsors? And I didn't even know that was a thing yet. So I had no aspirations of money out of the thing to start with. I was just doing it for the love of it. And then it got picked up by Revision 3. And then they blew my mind with, oh, you can put sponsors on this and you can actually make this a job. And I was like, wait, I'm sorry, this can make money? Uh, and then that happened and it didn't make me any money for, I had a full-time job for over, a, I think it was over a year before I was able to finally quit my full-time job and, and focus on this. And then mm -hmm. even that, it was several years before I could pay anyone else other than myself really. Mm -hmm. so it was me doing everything by myself and then finally i was able to and it was bit by bit it took mm -hmm. years to turn it into a thing it wasn't like you know you have people who you know go on and hit for doing this or that but that that candle ends up burning out you know it's the ones that put in that it took a long time to build and understand and it's kind of like you you were saying earlier the maturity that comes with it i think is what leads to longevity because they're you know, it's been really hard and then sometimes your views are really good and sometimes they're not. And sometimes you're getting a great rate from sponsors and sometimes they're like, listen, dude, you're getting 30,000 an episode. We can, we're not paying you that. And you're like, great. So then you have to have multiple legs. It can't just be this one thing, this one basket. You know, you got to have multiple shows and a store and you're also doing stuff, work on the side that no one will ever hear about, but it helps pay the bills. Um, Diversi so they're diversifying your revenue streams. Exactly. Diversification is everything. My dad always posed it to me as like, uh, which is probably, you know, he probably got it from somewhere, but he's like, if you're going to sit on a stool, you know, you need four legs, right? And I'm like, yes. He's like, take off oh. one of those legs and now sit on the stool. How comfortable is it? I'm like, oh, he's like, now take off two legs. Now, how are you doing? Oh, now have one leg on that stool. Are you able to sit on that stool? Nope. And he's like, there you go. I and was, like, and I, he owned, he owned I, a company and I'm going to steal that. I'm going to steal that. That's so amazing. <laughs> it's that's good. It's that's good, so right? good. But, so good. And, and that's it. He taught me that since, you know, I was young because he owned a company. And so he really understood what that meant. To, so he's been quite a, quite a mentor to me as far as, you know, building a company. And, and that was, I had that person to talk to, to help. But if it wasn't for that thinking, if it wasn't for my dad putting that four legs on the stool mindset in my head, I don't think film right would be around today because there's no way I would have sustained it. In fact, we just went through a period of time where we had several months without a single sponsor. We were doing film riot for free. It was everything else that was helping us sustain us through that time as mm -hmm. we moved out of one thing and into another. Um, and it had to have that so we could move into a new, you know, path, but you know, the, it's difficult. So I guess the point I'm making is I don't think it's viable for anyone on its own. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to do this, it needs to be multifaceted. There needs to be multiple things and you need to be regardless if it, if it was 2009 or right now, you need to be ready just like anything else in this industry, which has basically been our entire talk. Mm -hmm. You need to be ready to plant your feet in the ground and endure this thing for years and years and years and years, not chase views. We've never chased views. We do like some like flash speed effect every now and again because we want to, because it'll be fun, not because we know it's going to get a ton of views. And that's been one of the reasons why, you know, our, our show has uh, probably built slower than it could have. The views, you know, are up and down a little more than they but for me, it's if we're chasing views, I just can't do that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be able to keep doing this. I don't care. You know, I want to talk about what is the psychology between why I put together this action scene. 
not just, hey, check out this cool stunt, but let's talk about the psychology. Of, let's talk about the intention of what's going on. You know, that what is it, you know, what does it mean with what is happening with the camera? You know, that stuff, and that stuff doesn't always get the most views. Um, uh, uh, but, you know, it's the stuff that really matters to me. So we balance it out. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I think it's that is like, are you doing something that you have to do just like anything else? If you're doing YouTube because you want to make money, you know, maybe <laughs> you will for a little bit, but it ain't going to last, you know, and, and, and YouTube revenue, just freaking forget it. Unless you're making millions of views every single episode, you're not making enough money to sustain. It's just not a thing. It's like the YouTube revenue. We don't even hardly pay attention to it. It's all, that's all like sponsor base or however else you could parlay that into to something. Um, so yeah, man, it's just super hard. And I think anything in the entertainment industry comes back to that same thing I said before with that Twitter question of the only question you have to ask yourself is, can you do something else? If you can, don't do this <laughs> because it is friggin' hard. And everything you just said, and obviously film a shampoo prank videos. Um, that's obviously how to make well, it. Well, obviously. <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously. Cats. <laughs> Shampoo pranks and be a horrible person in vlogs, and you are set. <laughs> How about if you do a shampoo prank video on a cat uh -huh. yes. while being a douche? <laughs> oh, a billion views. You are the most subscribed YouTube channel in history. 